on. Sage, come on. Good job, right? And then right here when he blows by me, I don't give a shit because I didn't ask a formal command in that moment. Functional obedience. You filming? Yes. Come. David with Miracle Canine Training. Um, today I got Sage and Turk here. Sage and Turk are two dogs that board with us very regularly. Their owner requested a boarding tune-up session. Um, so we're gonna do some tune-up stuff with them. These are really good dogs. Um, these are dogs that have had a ton of freaking training already up until this point. They really don't give the owners much of a hard time because they board them so regularly with us. They like to get the tune-up session for some of their longer trips to kind of take advantage of making sure they're really getting like one-on-one -on -one time with a trainer. Um, and also just to keep brushing up on things. So um, because like I said, they are pretty good. There's nothing like really particular that they're struggling with. Um, what I wanna do today is we're going to kind of try to find something fun that we can go and do with them um, to kind of test their training a bit. Um, I think a lot of times when people look at tune-up session or want to get further training, um, they're doing that, not their owners necessarily, but they're doing that as a way to provide better things for their dog. So, so trainers make this mistake of they'll highlight the training, right? They'll highlight the freaking downstays and the bedstays and all those types of things, which in some cases, if we're tuning up obedience that is not where it needs to be, there is an extent of, of teaching, right? There is an extent of like, oh, well, this downstay sucks, so let's get it better. Or this, uh, you know, uh, recall isn't very good, so let's get it better. But in their case, that's not exactly what they need. We need more functional training, which is gonna be training real life activities we wanna be able to do with them. So instead of focusing on leash walking and downstays and all all those things what we're going to do is we're going to work on uh, maybe some off leash training with them giving them freedoms um, that maybe the owner doesn't give them enough because they focus on too much of the obedient side of things uh, etc etc as you see i already walked them off leash all the way down the building brought them out here put them into downstays they've been holding these downstays just fine uh, obviously since uh, since we got out here as we've been talking obviously so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on using the commands where we need it but giving them cool outlets here um, and kind of going from there so come along on the journey sage turk come <clears throat> Sit. Good. Turk. Come on, get in. Not you, get out of here. <laughs> Sage, sit. Okay, get in. Look at these friggin' guys. All right, let's go somewhere. Come. No, come. Down. No, down. Good. Come. All right guys, so getting back to, we're working functional obedience with these dogs. So what is functional obedience? Everybody uses that word, everybody's got a little bit different of a definition for it. So for me, when I look at what functional obedience is, I look at, it's not the action of going through the motion of doing dog training, but it's the places where truly in real life, you need your individual commands in order to achieve certain goals. So the reason why with dogs like them who have had a ton of training, why I like to do drills like what we're doing right now, and when I say drills, I mean literally real life things, is because you start to see the areas where the training is sloppy and where it's really good in real life. So for example, got here to the park, 
got him out of the car. You see, I just off leash walked them again. No freaking problem, past people, stuff like that. But getting out of the car in a new place with them, we saw a hole, right? I opened the crates, I told them come. They jumped out of those crates with a ton of excitement and they didn't come right into that come command. They were like, what's going on? Where are we, right? So I was able to correct for that, get them back into position, tightening up a real life place we need our training, which is when we get them out of the car to go to a new place, whether it's the vet or the park or whatever it may be, they've got to understand that they default into that position of being next to us until we give them the freedom. From there, obviously we have to walk to our destination. We're gonna be giving these guys some off-leash freedom, obviously, but until we get to that spot, I do need them to stay with me, moving by people, stuff like that, which obviously was no problem. And we continue on with our functional obedience. So let's keep rolling. Functional obedience point number two. Okay, so a lot of people, well, we, and we're even guilty of this, so when I say a lot of people, I, I include us as trainers here, are guilty of when they talk about their training for off-leash obedience, what they wind up doing is they wind up showing the dog off-leash working on obedience commands, which technically speaking is the definition of off-leash training. Now. Here's the problem, right? Really, what off-leash training is and is for is to do exactly what we're doing right now, which is let dogs go, be dogs, explore at their will, and do whatever it is they want to do with having the ability to call them back to us if need be, which generally is going to happen only at the end or if a distraction comes by that we want them to avoid, obviously. So. This is functional thing number two, making sure they're releasing, going off, having a good time. And then once they're really in the zone of things, making sure they're gonna be reliable with coming back. Come on. Functional obedience tip number three, the informal recall. So a lot of people make the mistake in an issue like right there, where Sage was off in the distance, wasn't doing anything at all wrong, he's free, but he was going somewhere where, I, I don't wanna go in that area right now. A lot of people make the mistake of constantly using their formal recall for things like that. They'll say, come, and because they don't really give a shit if the dog comes to them in that moment, they just wanna make sure that the dog is moving in their direction away from that thing that they want. They'll say, come, and then they half-ass enforce it, right? So instead of them, you know, focusing on really coming all the way to you, stopping next to you, all that good stuff, the dog will get kind of near them and then they'll kind of blow them off and they don't give a shit and it's whatever, right? I don't do that. I save my recall for when I really need it and when I'm really actually gonna be enforcing it and I use my informal recall for everything else. Let's say I didn't want them to go over there. Or let's say I wanna get my dogs to come inside from the backyard, but I'm not in any sort of position to enforce that command. Here's what I do. Come on, Sage, come on. Good job, right? And then right here when he blows by me, I don't give a shit because I didn't ask a formal command in that moment. Functional obedience. <clears throat> and notice when I said, come on, and he didn't come to me, I don't give a shit either, because I didn't use a formal command. Sage, or right there, blowing me off. Sage, come on, let's go, come on, good job, buddy, right? And then if I start noticing he's a little bit too sloppy with it, Sage, come. Formal command, let's see what he does. Boom, good job, buddy, okay. <clears throat> Sage, come. No, come. Even right there, a little bit too far. Obviously, formal come command means all the way to me. And because I used the formal command in that moment, that is the standard that I'm gonna hold him to with it. And notice right there, as soon as I gave that formal come, he came right to me, even though he just blew me off three times with a little informal, let's go, come on, blah, 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 right? Okay. So these are tips and tricks that us as dog trainers use in functional obedience. A lot of people think us dog trainers are these like, I don't know, like mystical, we enforce everything and our dogs are fucking robots all the time and stuff like that. Couldn't be further from the truth. I always say I am like the laziest person with my dogs. I rarely ever use my obedience commands. And the reason why I get away with it and hold those obedience commands to the same standard when I do actually need them is because I'm good at never wasting them and using them in situations where I don't really need them to do it or I'm not in a position to enforce it. So I save it for when, Sage, come, when I actually need it. No, come. Down. 
No. Down. <clears throat> no. Down. No. Down. Very good. And again, using a formal command here right now, called them to me, put them into a down, and force it all the same, obviously, because we have a dog off leash in the distance. And this is where you can kind of use your barometer of free time versus structured time, right? So free time wasn't an issue for them. They obviously ran off, had a good time, no problem, obviously. And I could still enforce all of my commands just fine here right now. But I am starting to notice that when I do give some of the commands, I could correct them and get them into it, but they're a little more distracted than I want them to, uh, or want them to be. So as I'm doing these tune-up sessions, I'll adjust what I'm working on. Instead of doing only free time, which is no problem at all for these dogs, maybe I will sprinkle a little bit more obedience in until they're a little bit more reliable with those commands. Um, and kind of bob and weave from there as I need to. And this is the same tactic I use with my dogs throughout the months with them um, is, you know, how reliable are they with their obedience versus how, how quick are they to be free and go do their own thing. Okay. Come. So same deal, sprinkle another come in, very good. Down. Much better with the down that time. No. Turk, down. Very good, where Turk's a little bit too slow with it still. Okay. <clears throat> now notice now, they're sticking to me a little bit more, which is a byproduct of the more you work obedience, the more they stay glued to you. Come. Good. Down. No. Down. Okay. Good job, guys. Come. <clears throat> Down. Perfect. That time got them both to do it perfectly on the first repetition. So now that I have them smooth, now that I don't need the correction for those commands, okay. Sage. I'll go back to having some freedom. Okay.